We've been busy. We haven't been in the shop for a while. Um, what I have been doing in the shop though is cleaning. I've moved all the engines. <laughs> we should have made a video when we bring the 305 home. Me and Jolene drug it through the front door. We got creative, did we not, baby? Mm -hmm. We got her through the front door, we got her cleaned up. But we haven't been here for a while, and uh, we might as well take off where we left off. And it was the Jaguar engine, I think, wasn't it? Jaguar engine. Uh, just trying the breather on here from Jolene's engine that she bought. Uh, it fits this engine. So I just, I just checking that out as I rip it up. It fits. Uh, we got all the spark, we got all three of the spark plugs out. And I'll just recap what went on there. Uh, Jim had it soaking in uh, transmission fluid for years. That's what was in it, transmission fluid. When Doug first started, we were sp spraying it with the penetrant. Crown penetrant, we sprayed that. Doug was doing that earlier. We didn't get it on film, we didn't do that. The candle we did when Jeff came over and, and give us that pass that piece of advice on, you know, that's something that if you do not have penetrant, you do not have heat and all that stuff, there you go, the candle thing. But we got them all out. You can see the wax around each one of them that was that was taken out. This one's got wax around it, this one's got wax around it, and that one there's got a little puddle of wax around it. And this is what I found out. This is what I found out. This is when I welded inside the spark plug, I was welding down the, in the inside the center of it, um, that didn't work because it pulled right out the first time. I have you had I had to weld onto the side of this, get onto the side of the spark plug and start welding it that way, and then turn my welder and try to get some some weld it to the other side, the inside of the spark plug. I filled it up really, really, really hot, and made a little puddle out of it. It wasn't going anywhere. This and what the, the right thing to do is is what I found on the end one because we got it quite quick. As soon as I got that puddle on that on that uh, spark plug, throw a washer right down quick, throw a washer down, lock washer or flat washer, and weld that really quick and get a puddle on top of that. As that's red, then throw the nut right down quickly on top of that and try to weld that nut in the middle, on top of that washer. And then let it cool down, do your wax, do your penetrant, do whatever you want to do, and then try to take it in and out, take it in and out, take it in and out. At the end, that worked really nice. What I found with the, the first one and the second one, I was not, I was welding the, the spark plug, got it all nice and red and hot, got to weld it to it. And then I waited for a minute, went over the box and done a few things, fuddled around and then, and then welded a nut on top of it. Uh, that twisted off a couple times really easy, many times. Uh, what I should have been doing is getting that red hot, that spark plug red hot, Throwing the washer down top, white's red hot, and you keep going, keep going, put a puddle on top of that, and then throw your nut down top of that, keep going, keep going, and then let it cool and try it. That's what I found out. Uh, we got them all out, so that means that now we have probably a, a pretty good Jag motor. Uh, this motor was kept inside and uh, nothing but. As, as Doug said, there was no sense taking the head off because it would have caused so much work with the cams. So the cam would have to come off, cam would have come off, all the timing gear. And then you really still couldn't get out the spark plug like you think you can. <laughs> still, you still would be in the same boat. So now that we got them out by welding it, absolutely. Um, oh, I was over the moon when I went to bed that night. I went over the moon. Uh, a friend of mine, Jack, dropped in a camera so we can go down inside and take a look see what it's like. And he also bring this thing here. This thing will go down inside the spark plug hole and then you bang on it, that'll go up inside of it. And then when you twist it out, it will bring all your gook out instead of letting it go down inside the cylinder. So that's going down inside, you hit it on top and then it flies out on the end like that. And then we, then we twist it out and it brings all the stuff out. That's a pretty awesome tool, I think. Something that someone's using their brain, I can tell you that. So we'll try that and get that stuff out of there, get it cleaned up. Maybe we'll try to get it running. Who knows? But there she sits. I'm very happy with it. And the breather does fit. I said the breather would fit. It does fit. Just going to set it on there for now to get it out of the way. Let's face it. Everything's just setting everywhere to get it out of the way. But that's what I do sometimes. I'm getting it half cleaned up here. We're going to go for, you know, to make this video, we may as well do something. We're going to go for the seat. 
We've had uh, Doug bring down some seats of Bernie's or out of the Jaguar. They fit, they do. I find them, we find them quite bulky. Uh, I'm not into like the plastic thing on the side. It's just a few things that I'm not interested, uh, I'm not interested in on having that look in that car, if you know what I'm trying to say. We would never match up uh, buy supply tires with something that looks like a, you know, that would newer, if you know what I'm trying to tell you. I would try to like to keep um, somewhat uh, visually in the same era, visually. It doesn't have to be. I mean, let's face it, I will do stuff that make, you know, I'll use newer stuff, but visually when you look at it, it could be, um, it could be. This and like this and that and the plastic on the side would not be at that time is what I'm trying to say. The bulk, like the seat are very comfortable. Um, yeah, the seats are very comfortable. But we want to do something that me and Jolene have come up with. I'm not sure. We have been looking around on the internet a little bit. Jolene's got a seat that comes up and folds back like that. But on the side of the seat is just probably two inches thick all the way on the side view when you look at that. On the side view, it's just that thick. And it looks quite, it looks different. It looks art, art, you know, there's kind of an art there to art effect to that seat. Not everybody would make a seat that looks like that. But we are thinking about that. And as I have this seat here, and I put it into the car, I will know the, the shape that I want. I'm gonna do make a pattern of the shape that I wanna make, because I, I, I like this back shape here, I like this shape here, and I like this shape here. And I can draw this down by my eye if I want to. So I like this one, and I like this one. Once I get that, then I can come in and make it how thick I want it, if you know what I'm trying to say. Um, that is a seat that we're thinking about. It would just be one piece of foam that ran down it. The side can either be uh, the material itself, or it can be it could be wood on the side of it. It could be chrome on the side of it. There's so many things that you could put there that would make it look good. I know some of the seats had chrome on the top and come down like that. Um, we can, we can, we can do anything we want to. But right now, I just want to try to get a shape. Um, these seats are not ours, they're burners, but probably we want to give them back to him. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to tow some stuff out of the car here. Uh, I apologize that I have to move some stuff, but that's the way it rolls sometimes when I'm going to show you something. I just don't get prepared. I'm always waiting. Do it as you're watching so you see what happens. Up here. We are taking very good care of your seats, Bernie. We want to get them back to you as quick as possible. That way, there, we don't have to look after them anymore. <laughs> I want. Just trying to rest the door on a tight part. I still haven't done anything with the dash. That means I have to get in there. And uh, nope, not gonna do that. I'm gonna put it on the floor, it won't fall. I still have to get in there and drill that hole. Wait this second. And the reason being for the seat is because we, we, you know, we have to make seats, but we want to take the seats back to him. So, or Bernie, we want to take it back to him. So we want to keep them forever. You know what I'm saying? We want to get our, our job done and then move on. seat fits in here. Let's check it out now. Uh, this 
see here, I got this going right up hard against that wheelhouse. And I've got a hard going up on this wheelhouse here. It fits in there, it's a little bit bulky. I'm gonna get in just to show you, just to show you and, and myself. With the seat back like this, uh, you'd be able to drive it. With the seat <laughs> up like this, it, it doesn't work, eh? Um, with Jolene in it, she's got a little more room than I do, but the seat has to be laid back in this car to work for whoever's driving it. And I like the support. Well, I like the support of the seat, I really do. But the seat that we're going to put in it, we're going to try to, I mean, this seat is a bit beefy. We're going to try to take a little bit off the bottom and try to get a little bit off the back, I suppose. But you're going to be driving this car like so. Um, with Jolene in the side of it, she looks a lot better than I do. I can tell you that for sure. Now let's just shut the door. Uh, my arm sits here nice. I can see out the window. I'd have to look down. It's fine. I could not wear boots in this car like, to drive. But what do you what do you frown about, sweetheart? Like we're quite high up in the car. But like, you can. As as I open this door again. As I lay back, I've got headroom now. I not. I take my hat off. Like there's a little bit of headroom there. Um, if I pulled ahead, it, it does not. So I'm thinking that we're going to keep the, the, the back of the seat laying back quite hard or the best we can. Uh, this is another thing too. Right now, the seat is on the flat of the, of the floor. One bar back, then it starts raising up a little bit and it'll change the shape of everything. Yeah. I don't have to talk myself into it anymore. That's where the seat has to go. That's where the seat has to go. That's what it has to look like. And you can see how it's laid back on this part, eh? Right there, and you can see how this part of the floor is coming up. You know what I mean? This part of the floor is coming up. So we'll lay this, the seat on the flat part of the floor. This part is for the backrest. It's going to go somewhat up against the wheelhouse of that. The window is going this way. And the body is going that way. Let's take it over. And check it out. I've got the seat there. And I want to use that one. It's quite laid back, I know, but uh, for me, I think it's the only way for us to fly is to have it fit with the most room, I think. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's back quite ways. It does not matter. We're gonna, I'm gonna make something, I'm gonna draw something out here. And we'll, may use it and we may not. And we'll have to discuss how we're gonna make it and how we're gonna do it. Um, I like the yeah, idea of foam all along the side of the seat. That would really, I like the chrome, I kind of like the chrome idea across this bar too, to make it look like a, it had a roll bar in it to chrome that. I think that would look nice. I want to thank the person who thought that I need it Bristol board, because I do. I'm the kind of guy, just, just grab just about anything to draw something on, you know what I'm saying? As you can tell. Thank you very much. I look pretty professional with two pieces of Bristol board. I haven't had a piece of Bristol, Brinson, Bristol board since high school, huh? So, just gonna set that right flat on there. I'm gonna take two of these together because I'm gonna use the pair of them. Piece of tape. We, we stuck on the bench. We may, we may not. 
sometimes you get too much food on your plate and it can become quite <laughs> too much sometimes but it's kind of cool just to look at it's cool just to look at uh, tomorrow and tomorrow we're going to heaven <laughs> that's what I can say we're going to heaven uh, we went to this place and um, this man had her we went to this place what day was it baby a couple days ago anyways we went to this place a friend of ours John said he was going up to look at this guy's collection and uh, he said you guys should come over and take a look because we were going the same way and we were going to look at a boat motor Doug showed me his boat motor and I seen one in the buy sell trade so I chased down the anyways long story short um, I seen one probably one of the best collections I've ever seen in my life just because all the stuff that he had I enjoyed <laughs> and he had um, many 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 memories in that garage because he he bought and paid for every one of them and he remembered everything but when I went in there he had so much so many collectibles that uh, it was just it bewildered me I didn't know you know as as he was selling his collection I didn't know what to acquire what not to acquire there were so many things that I would like to have but you have to be reasonable like I mean let's face it you can't have it. Well, we're going to go there tomorrow, and uh, we're going to show you, we're, we'll do a little video there, and uh, we're going to show you where we're at, where we're pecking, and what was there, and uh, yeah, how it inspired me. Man, I'm telling you, for a man to collect that many things, just think of all the good memories he had, and all the, what, what's that called? The thrill of the hunt. When you see this man's collection, or and most of it's probably gone by now, everything was priced right. And I'll say this because he was selling it, or somewhat, the prices that he bought it at 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, everything was priced right. Um, there wasn't much dickering. It was, it was just priced right. You either liked it or you didn't. Uh, I enjoyed that part. Um, yeah, he told you a story about everything he bought. He knew where he got it, whatever. Anyways, we'll make a video when we get there and show you. This is what I'm doing right this second. I'm taking a marker and tracing without touching for any seats. I'm just tracing it, right? Doing the two step around the seat. Do the front too for, for poops and giggles. Now, basically, basically that's the shape of our seat, and I would say our seat's hitting in the car right about there. Um, so we want to make a seat that is going to look like this. So what I'm thinking is, is we go up in here like this. I'm just going to, as I have this seat here, now I'm allowed to make whatever I want, am I not? Um, I don't know what the front of the seat looked like that I'm going to show you. I'm, going to, I'm just going to do my own for a second. I'm just going to trace inside of it a little bit. We'll bring it down an inch or so. I keep going. Trying to keep the same playing field, I guess. And if you can picture it. Nope, it's gonna come down here to hit on the, that's where the, the metal was. So we're gonna come down here a little bit. So this is the back of the seat and it hits the back of the wheel well of the car. We don't have to hit the back of the wheel well of the car. So why would we? We'll just take a little bit off of this, or quite a bit off of this. And go in here. Yeah, 
keep it the same. We're gonna make a, a bigger little notch here. It, this might have to be angled, who knows. So, Jolene's, I should get a pair. So we've lost two inches here, two and a half inches here. We've gained two, two inches, two and a half inches here because I can go back a little bit further, right? You know what I'm trying to say, if it's not hitting, we obviously can go back. When we're sitting on the seat, we're not shoved so forward ahead, we can, we got more space there. Uh, this might have to be cut up on an angle because this is where it comes down flat. This part will be where it's flat. We'll sit on the flat up front, come around, and this will cut, be cut on the angle wherever it is. This will have to be made out of one piece. I'll cut it out. It'll have to be made out of one piece of metal. We would face the back side of it, so we'll cut. Actually, it'll be four. It'd be just like a, par a park bench. You know, you cut the park bench, you cut your two metal sides or your two cast iron sides, and you shove your two by fours in. Uh, we'll just go uh, two pieces of one eighth plate. We'll cut it out of a piece of metal. We'll have two of them. Then we'll sheathe the back with a piece of metal maybe. And then we'll put the foam on the inside and she wants it with, we want to get no, we want no ribs in it because of the material that she's going to use. We do not want this. I don't think we want it flat. Uh, and this is how we're going to do it, I think. So I'm just going to cut this out of that, and then we'll see what it looks like sitting in there. Let's we'll go for it. So, pretty, pretty cool, eh? You can make the dash of the car right to the seats if you like. <laughs> you can make, make every piece of the car really. Well, I mean, let's face it, you're probably not going to make the Speedo. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying, like you can make any piece you want. And I'm just going to cut this out. Um, I can perfect it as I go. I want to cut this out and just see what it would look like inside the, the car. Oh, that's a hard one. Slid it right over, I did. And all I'm trying to do is keep the same distance away as I would all the way through, just try to keep it somewhat equal. There we go there, I can always cut it off less. So we've gained and got more on both of this on the back. We've gained and got more on both sides. I will not throw that away. Thank you. I will not throw that away. So if you can picture if I made two of those. See how we're sitting flat up here see that where it turns up I'd have to cut that back a little bit I like this how it goes with that you know it's pretty close I'm just going to take that by eye and this is what I, this is how I do it when I see the distance from here to there how far it's away and that part is hitting that means I take this distance here and go from this side down to nothing that's what I'm going to do And then that would be our seat. I might have it tilted back a little bit much. I like it going with this. I like that. And, and that right there, that right there, we need two of those. We can, we can make it smaller at the bum and bigger at the top. Give it a, like a crown top, you know, we can bring it out a little bit. 
We can do whatever we please. But as we do this, there's probably what the seat will look like. Cool, eh? You enjoying that? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I guess that's what we're gonna do. So we have no problem giving Bernie his seats back now. I've done what I'm supposed to have done. We'll draw that onto it. We'll need a piece of one eighth plate and we'll have to, like I said, we'll have to face the bottom of it and then lay our foam on the inside of it. Um, Jolene has a material picked out. She has material picked out. I'm gonna leave that right there. That was pretty good, bud. Mm -hmm. 